All right, and three, two, one, and all right, it is Tuesday on the Bit Nerds. Hello, welcome everybody. My name is John Polnick. I'm a Bit Nerd, along with my partner Michael Deeb, right over there. Uh, I'm coming to you from live from the Las Vegas Strip in beautiful Las Vegas, Nevada, and my partner over there is coming to you from the Bay Area in San Francisco. We are your daily nerd out on the most interesting cars on cars and bids and bring a trailer uh today we've got an amazing lineup of cars to talk to you guys about we're going to make some predictions as to what these cars will sell for we'll analyze the market we'll talk about what's going on in the market and we're also going to talk about yesterday no, no, yesterday no, we no, made no, some predictions no. uh why for cars you, yesterday why, why would you do that Oh, I'm sorry, Michael D. But I, I got to bring it up. I got it. You know, we do kind of keep track of our of our predictions and our bids for each one of these cars. Every day, we'll give you a number what we think this car is going to hammer for, bid to, not bid to, all that kind of oh. fun stuff. Um, Whose idea was that? Yeah, Who's boy, uh, what happened yesterday, Michael? What's going on? N- uh, I'm feeling happened. pretty strong here. Oh, uh, yeah. Flexing I, I, my muscles. I don't know. I, I think it's time. I'm not going to cry about this every afternoon, but I think it's time we talk about the elephant in the bid nerd studio. Mm, mm. And that is, that is the natural handicap based on how we do our picks. <laughs> yeah. So I would like to, I would like to tell the audience that the bid nerds is the creation of John Polnick. This is mm. his brainchild. And he is also the mojo that, that drives this thing. Um, I am simply, I have been invited out of the generosity of John's heart. Um, he has given me a platform by which I can sit up here and and voice my terrible opinion on cars. Um, but since John runs this thing, the way we do it is I go first, and then John, <laughs> John, who claims that I'm the expert, which I'm not, and that he knows nothing, which is also untrue. Um, he get he knows just enough about cars to know if I'm out of my mind or not. So every time <laughs> I go first, John gets to just instead of really committing to a number where he thinks it's going to land, he can just undercut or overcut my bid and give himself and give himself tons of blue sky in between his bid and the, then the hammer. And, and nowhere was that more apparent than all of last week and yesterday. Uh, I'd say, John, you're getting really good at this and I'm not getting any better. Uh, but anyway, yesterday was a, just a complete Paul Nick out. It uh, was awesome. Um, <laughs> JP in the morning on the 2002 G 500, that car was on cars and bids. Um, I said 25.5, which I thought was fair because uh, it was a U.S. spec car. Uh, but interestingly, you undercut my bid by a couple of grand. You said 22.5, and that car didn't even break 20, $19,750, and it sold. Uh, the next car um, on Bring a Trailer was the 1990 911 Targo. This was the race car, the twin turbo. And what's really funny is that car, I mean, you could say, it was anybody's guess where that thing would land. I said 36, you said 35, and we got a draw on that because it brought 35,500, uh, but did not sell at that price. Uh, and then the car that I thought was the most beautiful, but um, certainly cosmetic challenge was the 88 944 Turbo S Silver Rose. Uh, one of my favorite cars, JP. One of these days, I'm going to spend too much money to buy one. Um, I thought it would bring 41. You were less enthused and said 38. That car only bid up to $34,722 and did not sell at that price. Uh, <clears throat> also, the 1975 914 6 with the big 3.6 twin plug car, super cool car that I think both of us would enjoy not only rocking out, but decorating. That car just seemed like a blank canvas to you and me. Yeah. And that with the with the roll bar and the wing and the, <clears throat> the GT flares, you and I both see like a street car, race car for the street. And we were both thinking how fun it would be to put a livery on that car, a livery. Uh, anyway, that car only made it up to $36,220 and did not sell at the price. So, so I still three, think the engine was worth that. <laughs> oh, absolutely. Yeah. And so there are three cars on a row that, that failed to meet their reserves, which is interesting because I don't know that you and I have had a day like that where we've seen so many cars not sell. Um, yeah. Last one was a good one. Uh, 83. 911 SC. And I remember telling you, I thought this car was worth 50 or more on bring a trailer, but that I thought it would fail to reach 50 on cars and bids, which is why we were looking at this particular SC coupe that no nonsense, 77,000 miles, beautiful car. You and I both love that Grand Prix white, but you thought it might not even make 42,000. And again, you were correct. This car 
sold at $39,250, failing to make 40 grand on cars and bids when you and I both believe that car is worth 50 uh, on another platform. So there you go. A very interesting day. Gosh, I wish I was paying attention to that auction because, uh, or maybe I don't because my bank account would be in serious jeopardy right now. I probably oh. would have bought that thing. Um, yeah, here's the thing. There, there. I think there's a couple things going on. One, uh, you know, let's talk about uh, because I do think you're right. There is, uh, I do get an inherit advantage uh, in our little keeping track thing. That's kind of fun uh, oh, as yeah. kind of the it. host of the show. I, I get to ask you what your bid is, and then I can <laughs> uh, price is right your butt every time and just go one dollar. Yeah. It can be that guy. <laughs> you do have. one one slight advantage over me uh, the, the above and beyond your general knowledge that's better than mine. I think <laughs> that uh, you get to pick three cars and I typically only pick two. So you, oh, so okay. it'd be, it would be interesting to go back and see it, in, and track the accuracy of the cars that you chose versus the cars <sighs> I chose and yeah. vice versa, just to get <laughs> into the meta there. On top of that, I do think it would be interesting. There, there, there is a way that we could do this. Like maybe we lock our bids in, the before, before the show yeah uh, so that, that cool. it's before we actually go on air and cool. uh, that would certainly be far 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 more telling now that, would, that, that would you know great parody that'd be great parody right and i think i would get my butt kicked on the regular <laughs> because before we were pretty darn even and now it seems yeah. like i've figured out how to game the system and <laughs> uh, i'm just whooping you left and right yeah. so, so I, I love the idea of uh, having somebody uh, quantify our uh, data um certainly when we get an auction we'll pick up an engineer um but once we get swag and we become popular and famous and we do uh, we need an rats, audience that gives a shit yeah yeah we'll, um, we'll, we'll, we'll have we'll have um We'll have constant bids for uh, interns, and an intern can do that job. Yeah, That'll be perfect yeah. for our, our first bid nerds intern. Well, here's something I think that's more relevant to the audience now, though. And, and I, I really yesterday was a big, big eye-opener. Uh, what There's something going on, and it could be a couple of different things. I, I think everything is soft right now. Yeah. I think that there is, we are running into the holiday. I mean, this is Christmas yeah. week. Christmas totally. is at the end of the week. So are the prices and the low bids a reflection of a market fluctuation? Is there something going on? Are people getting tighter because they're worried about what's happening in the world? Or is this simply a holiday anomaly? And as soon as the holiday is over, we're going to go right back to people, back to their computers and back to buying classic cars so on Cars and Bids and bring a trailer. What do you think? So I have I have a strong answer to your your thing. If okay. these were three regular cars, uh, I'd say your suspicions were probably pretty spot on, given mm. the circumstances that we're faced with. But let's take a closer look. And and two of those three cars, JP, were race mm. cars. Yeah. To, to to you know, and I I just think that's uh, I, I think that's more to do with it than anything else. Who's looking for a race car Christmas week? And and either of those cars can be uh, replicated. They're not like. Uh, special cars. They're just somebody hacked up a street car and went racing in it. So these are cars that I think appeal to a very narrow audience. Uh, and then the third car, uh, that Silver Rose is a rare piece, but uh, cosmetically, I didn't believe in that car. I think it needed uh, far too much work. Um, it had been hit and it had cracked dash in Burgundy. I mean, that's just that's just too much for somebody to spend. So I think that the bid price is actually um, a reflection of what that car was worth um, and that the consigner had an unrealistic reserve set and, and BAT bought it and let them set a high reserve. And so that car had no chance. So I don't, I think we're overthinking it in this instance. That, uh, that, Hmm, that G wagon going for just under twenty. I mean, that's the first time I've seen a modern G wagon ever go for less than twenty. Now, granted, that thing had two hundred fifty thousand miles on it. And right. It was on the East Coast, so you know that actually to me seems like pretty good money for that. Yeah. I, and it look yeah. looking at that particular ad, uh, it looked like that car was something that was owned very short term like somebody th that was a flip somebody bought this thing from someone for a very low amount of money is my you know my right. guess is this was some you know somebody the neighbor had this thing neighbor, and it had yep. 250,000 somebody's like hey I'll buy that for 12 grand and uh, put it on this uh, cars and bids thing and see if I can take advantage of that to to get a national totally. uh, market totally. or something so yeah, yeah, yeah have so okay um and here here's one more thing i want to add to what you're talking about because sure. you're, you're on point i was gonna wait but uh we're gonna look at a bmw 1m a little bit later mm. i was reading some of the comments and one of the guys said um uh, it's interesting because you come to bring a trailer uh to find the car you're looking for not to get a good deal mm. and uh, and i thought yeah. that was interesting because you and i both feel like we can 
you know, rip a car off a P car or cars and bids. Um, but bring a trailer the the days of, uh, of kind of getting something for nothing, uh, I think are gone. The audience is so big now that cars are really bringing true market value. I, that's, that's the my word, opinion. Yeah. The word yeah. auction has always implied a deal, right? I mean, you go to uh, you go to like a county auction to get a deal on some oh, yeah. antiques or, 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 you know, an estate sale auction, or right. you go to eBay, you're looking to score, right? Um, yeah. Something about, uh, you know, I, I had my lesson learned when I went to Barrett Jackson, I don't know, five years ago or something like that. And there were a couple of Toyota pickup trucks that I thought I'd be able to score for a few grand. <laughs> and I went through the trouble of registering everything. And I saw these trucks go for like $30,000, which was, yeah. I'm like, wait, wait, what? This is, that's yeah. not, that's not just not getting a deal that's paying super ultra way premium so totally. it really is about the audience and and this has become an entertainment entertainment vehicle for people people yeah. watch bring a trailer uh, as entertainment and i think people get sucked in so, it's, so, uh, so I, I know i certainly have yeah jp you know how the the game of golf has like there's like the rule book and then there's like a whole nother book of unwritten rules uh mm. that, that are things in, and things that you have to do the live auction has a whole set of unwritten rules and and mm. so you know in the middle of the auction there are no deals the first the deals are always the first 10 lots or the last 10 lots mm. and uh and then everything else in between is is a different story so yeah it's it's a uh, it's something to be studied for sure. But, well, let's uh, get today's is, cars. Yeah, let's uh, let's talk about what we got. We've got a, an interesting mix, and totally. uh, let's see what we got. Let's uh, let's see what happens today. Let's get some predictions going. What do we got? What's our first car today? Yeah. So JP, today uh, uh, today we're going to start off on bring a trailer, and we're going to look at a 1975 BMW 2002 bauer cab now i did very very little re research on these there are some bmw cabriolets that are full convertibles but these bauer cabs keep the c pillar and so what you get is kind of a targa roof and a folding rear window uh these cars i believe were made in england and uh and so this car was brought into california um in 2015 where it was subsequently restored and what's neat is they didn't do a restoration to original 2002 specs they kind of borrowed from the parts bin of some of the best 2002s out there uh so i believe the uh, block is a tii block and there's mm -hmm. some suspension pieces from a tii it's got the get drag four speed um and uh, and everything on the car has been redone uh the body panels and rust repair and an all-new interior and bbs wheels painted black so this is kind of a cool car in that it's sort of the best of the of the group but it's not a faithful restoration to original spec it's difficult i think us here in california to judge the true values of these cars because you know they should bring 55 to 65 thousand dollars but they were never brought here originally and so there's just not that many uh to to that you see for sale in the united states these are all gray market cars at least the bauer cabriolets are as i understand it and i could be wrong so here's this car out of bellevue washington totally restored true mileage unknown but it looks spectacular it looks like they did a really beautiful job i'm not a fan of these cars i think the 2002s are a little too slab sided um, they're not exciting to me. Single headlight, no fender flares. They've never done it for me. I actually think that a BMW 320i is a much more attractive car, uh, but I feel like I'm alone on that one. Uh, what do you think? You've driven a, a 2002. Do you like these cars? Yeah, I mean, I, I'm a fan. I've never owned one, uh, in, but I, I have to admit, I've always had a soft spot for them. I love that kind of little boxy utility, and it's kind of like the, the Datsun 510s of the era. Totally. And, you know, but, you know, it's that there's something to be said for these because they're so you know spartan they are so small that they, they don't weigh anything and they're just fun to row through the gears and rip through the mountains through you know this car is in my neck my old neck of the woods in bellevue totally. so you know who knows maybe i've seen this car um i the bauer cab is is extra interesting to me because of you know having that roll bar and adding a little bit of extra rigidity i mean you're seeing a, a moment right now with targa porsches targa 911s oh, yeah. are definitely coming up so this kind of seems like it, it it makes sense for it to have uh, to have its moment as well. Now it's interesting that you mentioned the 320. Um, I, I I definitely think you're in the minority there. I think most people are going to prefer the the 2002s over absolutely a, over absolutely. a 320. Yeah, I a did question. own a Bauer convertible 320 though a, a long time ago. Yeah, you know, and that car was worthless at the time. I mean, that was yeah. like the cheapest BMW you could find. Uh, but, and, but wouldn't and that's you love to? 
but wouldn't you love to own that car today? Ooh, man, holy yeah. cow, that thing's got to be worth some money. Um, that car didn't handle particularly well. It had no power. It was way overweight. I mean, the 320s yeah. were such pigs. They were just, yeah. oh, my God, they had no power and way too much weight. Whereas this car, you know, the generation before that, it just wasn't bogged down with a lot of stuff. So, right. yeah, I mean, there's definitely there's definitely a sea of people who are into these, and I can see why. Not, you know, as much as I do like them, it really isn't my cup of tea. I'm not looking for a 2002. I don't think I'll yeah. ever have one in my garage. But uh, who knows? Maybe uh, you got a you got an idea on what you think this thing's worth. So it, what's I think is really cool, JP, is uh, something I do. I don't know if you do this. I actually put my uh, my notes together the night before, and uh, mm. so last night this car was on 12, uh, 12 bids at twenty six thousand five hundred, and now it's sitting here at thirty two thousand dollars. So it's gotten some action this morning or overnight, which is really cool. Uh, that being said. I'm not certain that this car is going to bring the money it deserves. Like if I'm, if I'm understanding these cars, this car should be worth over $50,000, but it just doesn't seem like it's gotten quite the action. I, I, I could be way wrong here, but I think it's going to peter out before it hits 40. So I'm going to say, I'm going to up my bid from 37. I'm going to say $39,000 and it's going to miss 40 grand. And I don't, is it a no reserve? No, I don't think this car is going to sell at that. I think it's worth more money, but it just doesn't look like it's got it. Yeah, maybe it's maybe it's the week. Your argument I, earlier. I, I think uh, I think everything this week. The closer we get to Friday, every car on the block is going to suffer. Uh, yeah. I agree with you. This car is not going to make it to forty unless there's some secret people sitting around waiting to jump in on this. Um, I'm going to go, you know, and yeah, I'm going to snipe you. I'm, uh, but I'll make it a little easier for you, and I'll I'll go thirty five. Wow. Okay. Cool. You know, I mean, again, I do agree with you though. I do think it's worth more. Yeah. Right now, we're not really talking about what's the car worth. It's more about what will the auction bring, and that's kind of our right. game. Is what what's happening on the uh, yeah. on the platform. That, that restoration was was more than forty grand by by a lot, probably t double that. And I don't think he's going to get his money out of it. So it's weird. And you no sale long, for sure. Yeah, you've long said that that uh, you know the guy who restores the car loses all the money, and it's the next guy that buys the car that that inherits the deal the value yeah. okay, unless cool. you're someone who does it himself or dwayne, herself dwayne yeah wick. if you're a dwayne wick or someone yeah. that has all the tools <laughs> and the extra time and you're yeah. gonna sit there and it's not you know if you if you add up all your time it doesn't work out even if you have the skills because you'd probably be better off selling that those skills to somebody else's car but Boy, uh, that's the only way to really make it pencil out is if you're you're not adding up your time, and that's just something that's a hobby, and you the, get to make some money after it. The the bid nerds show needs a Dwayne Wick Jeff Spicoli soundbite. My <laughs> old man's a TV repairman, and he's got an awesome set of tools. He's I got, can fix it. Yeah. <laughs> I can fix Dwayne it. Dwayne Wick can fix it. If he doesn't yeah. know how, he'll figure it out on the internet. <laughs> okay, so let's jump over. Uh, uh, staying on Bring a Trailer, let's jump over to this 1983 Porsche 944 black on black. Mm. This is a no-reserve auction out of Fair Oaks, California. This is one of the early cars, JP. Um, I don't believe there's an 82 944, so this is a first-year car. Uh, and it's only got 57,000 miles, but my heart is broken this morning because this, this auction has only gotten 10 bids and this car is sitting at $4,800. So wow. I think the idea of you not buying a car this week is <laughs> going to be in serious jeopardy. Yikes. Look at this thing, JP. It's, I mean, come on, like for five grand, you're going to tell me we're not going to California to get this car? <laughs> I may have spent that much on my first 944, which was the yeah. same year and same color. I mean, oh. honestly, this looks like the first 944 I owned back in, I don't know, 91 or something like that. Uh, yeah. Mine was a black on black 83 with the cookie cutters. The The great thing about the 83 is no power steering. And now back then that was looked at as a negative and everyone wanted the 84 newer or what re people really wanted was the 85 and a half to get that newer in interior this has that old school 940 right. uh, 924 yeah. looking interior it's, it's the dash right that center yeah. stack on the dash is the old style and there's carpet below the shifter yeah this is the old school one um but you know frank collins who's a, a classic porsche technician says these cars are bulletproof uh, i know you've owned them i have been a 944 fan since uh you know since puberty and i want one really bad um but i i think i i just don't know if i'd be happy with one that didn't have a turbo or wasn't an s2 so i i need to have my 
200 horsepower plus, and and then I can really rip around in it. You've got to get behind the wheel of one of these uh, that's done well because yeah. you know the thing about the 944 is that is the balance is amazing. It oh, is a yeah. you know the engine is in the front. It's a big straight four right it's a yeah. 2.5 liter on right. the 83 uh but it's got a transaxle you know it's got the the transmission is in the back in the which back, gives the yeah. car a perfect 50 50 weight balance uh, right they are bogged down by some emission stuff but you can open these up and uh, our friend lane skelton over at uh, dwa you know he has one that uh-huh. is just done so well and you get behind the wheel of that car you and you're just like oh my god God, this thing is like as fast or faster than an SC. It's amazing. Um, yeah. This one looks, re- I mean, a dashboard that's clean. Uh, it used to be, I used to be like everyone else and wanted that 85 and a half and newer, you know, more modern style interior. But now I want to go right back to 16 candles. Uh, this car <laughs> is really speaking yeah. to me. And yeah. it's bringing back memories of my old 944. My old totally. 944 was a total POS. This one yeah. does not appear to be that way. Did you happen to read the ad? Has the water pump timing belt uh have those things been addressed i would assume they have on on a on a platform like this because those are the two big achilles heels on these and see and i'm wondering if they have because the 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 value is so low i'm wondering if people are looking at this going well i've got to do all this stuff um and i i you got to wonder about those miles too because i mean fifty six thousand miles 57 it's a five digit odometer so I suspect it's 156 or 256. There's no telling. Whoa, you know, JP, I mean, and, and an these cars take. are very, yeah. very reliable. Frank is correct. So getting yeah. 250,000 miles out of one of these, uh, yeah, I mean, as long as you replace the water pump and timing belt, um, you know, I, I, if I remember correctly, even though the timing belt is a big failure point, uh, it's an eight valve head. We're not talking about a 16 valve here. Right. So even if you do have a timing belt failure, you might get away with it because it's not a zero tolerance head, if I remember correctly. Um, these do suffer bad head gaskets, though. Interesting. Um, but interesting. Yeah, you yeah. can see. I've always loved the heads on these with that big Porsche script across the top of the head like that. Super cool. That's yeah, that so valve cool. cover. Yeah. So it's uh, you know this car is originally a California car. A JP. I'm not sure if you're familiar, but in the 70s and early 80s, the California plate was a blue plate with the yeah. yellow script. And in 84 was the first year of a white plate that had California written across the top with these this little design that had three lines through it that looked like a setting sun. Um, and that was, the, uh, that was the first different plate to shy away from these blue plates that we had when I was a kid. Uh, so when I see this car with a California blue plate, it is, man, I talk about... Talk about bringing back memories. This is really interesting. Very, very cool. You are correct about um, this is a dangerous car. I mean, four hours, $4,800. Where do you think this is going to go if I'm not paying attention to it? Okay, so last night I thought, okay, this car is going to bring 9000 bucks, But this yeah. car has not moved at all. And so um, I always use the thing, reading the tea leaves, but I'm not very good at it. Uh, <laughs> it's only brought a couple hundred dollars more this morning. So I, I'm changing my bid, JP, and I am going to say 6800 bucks, $7,000. I don't know. I'm going to go $6,800 and say that's my bid. Boy, $6,800 would be a steal for this car. And, if the uh, miles, if it's 150,000 miles, is that still a steal, JP? You know, it really is. Uh, any any 944 that's running, driving, and in and maintained and in, in good condition is going to be worth in that seven to ten grand, grand range. I mean, 944s mm-hmm. have come up. Um, they have. Again, yeah, they really, really have. Like, I mean, so I, uh, you know, I found one. A, I don't know, a couple of years ago when 944s really started kind of on that upswing and I found one in Texas on Craigslist and I, and I talked to the guy, he sent me pictures. We went over the maintenance and we agreed on a price. He was asking, gosh, I want to say like nine grand. And I think we negotiated down to $7,500, which, and it was an 85. So it was, okay. a, it wasn't an 85 and a half. It was an 85. Now this sure. car, um, you know, that was all the money. No one had paid, uh, that much money for an 85 944 like that was like okay i'm 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 paying the premium now a really clean 85 
uh, will go for 10,000. No problem. Right? right. So I fly all the way out there. I have a friend in Dallas who actually picked me up from the airport. I stayed the night at his house. We get up in the morning. I we're driving out to this guy's house and I can, it was a red one, just like the one in 16 candles. And we could see yeah. it coming over the, you know, everything's <laughs> flat in, in, uh, in Dallas. And it was one of these new housing developments out in the middle of nowhere. So there's like yeah. a, a house here and there. You could just see this red dot way out in the distance and I'm getting excited. We pull yeah. up, we, we're, we don't even pull in the driveway. We just pull up in the curb. My buddy drives a, a, a 993 turbo and I'm just like, I look at my buddy Jay, Dr. Jay, and I'm like, I don't even want to get out. That car's not it. He's like, what? I'm like, you could just tell, right? It was like yeah. something about the pictures it sold. When I got yeah. there, you could tell that it had a bad repaint. I'm like, what yeah. the hell? And I don't think the guy was was acting, he wasn't acting in bad faith. It was just every now and then there's just something. Right. The guy, I felt really bad for the guy, I drove the car and everything, and he was so excited. He had all the, he had like stuff ready for me for my road trip. And I had to, when we had to pull it back in his driveway, and I had to say, so listen, nope. this isn't the car, yeah. sorry. And he was like, his face was like, what? His kid was crushed? I was just like, um, oh. yeah, it was just such a heartbreak. Uh, it, you know, I almost wanted to buy the car and drive home just to feel bad, but I have done that in the past. I have felt right. pressured having made the trip and like, okay, I'm going to do it. And it burned me, so I've, I've got that thick skin. This car, yeah. whoo. You know, bring a trailer. You can't really do that. If you, if you win the bid and you show up and it's not quite what you think it is, you kind of have to buy it. You're an asshole if you don't, you know what I mean? But but Uh, there's assholes out there, JP. There are assholes out there. That is true. So I don't know. Yeah. I really, really like this car. Uh, your bid was what? $6,800. Yeah. Oh boy. Um, I, I thought it was going to double in price and make nine grand. And now I'm not sure. I think it's going to go around 7,000 bucks. Yeah. And will it sell at that point? You know? Yeah, um, I think so. So I'll, I'll bet the over, uh, I'll say seven grand and okay. just say it makes it a little higher than that. And, and it yeah. finds an audience. I mean, it, we are talking four and a half hours from now. So that is right. a long time in bring a trailer land. So yeah, yeah I'll bet the over <laughs> on that. And if it doesn't, I'll be paying attention to this this one and where <laughs> where is fair oaks what part of california southern, is that southern, Cal- southern california somewhere that's okay so, but, but but away from the coast i think yeah all right well might be going yeah. to fair oaks okay there it is all uh right. what's the next car i spent way too much time on that sorry on that long lingering story Not about my dallas 944 what do we got next yeah i think it's pretty obvious to our audience that you and i both like the 944 mm. and i think we should both have one so but in the meantime let's go to canada together uh Ooh. we're looking at another no reserve auction from our buddies i i just have to say i am a fanboy of silver arrow classic cars limited out of victoria british columbia they Mm. keep bringing these super cool cars uh close to the border and then putting them on bring a trailer um tempting idiots like me to um step on our wallets and step up and buy these cars that they never brought to the united states they have a knack for picking these really cool cars so this is a 1993 porsche 911 c4 however jp this is the 30th anniversary. Porsche called it the Jubilee edition. The 30th anniversary of the first 911, which was the 63, right? Uh, so this car actually has the turbo body. It's got all-wheel drive and the wide fender flares of the front and rear, just like the turbo, but with no wing because it doesn't have to go around an intercooler because this is a normally aspirated wide body. Now, most of the Jubilees were offered in this, um, I think, model-specific Viola metallic exterior. But there are some Jubilees out there that got delivered in white and silver and black. But the majority of the Jubilees you find for sale overseas, primarily in Europe, are this Viola metallic that was unfortunately paired oftentimes with a Rubicon gray full leather interior. I have seen a Jubilee on black leather, and JP, I am happy to report Mm. it is savage looking. It's gorgeous. Um, I'm not a fan of the gray, um, but you could almost learn to live with it because I just think this is one of the most beautiful cars uh, Porsche has ever made. Something about this paint scheme, and look at the photographs on this overcast day where the light and the dark really show you how buffed and muscular this body work is uh, hold anyways. on a second hold on i gotta stop here yeah. uh and i'm loving the information you're giving us here but limited edition this is number 365 yeah <laughs> i like, know wow nice. yeah. yeah out of uh i think they made 900 uh, so number 365, they're numbered editions. Uh, and then you can see that logo that you're looking at there says Jahair or the Jubilee, I think, uh, across that bottom line. So just 
it's a lot of little details that add up something that's perhaps greater than some of the parts. These cars do bring collector money. You can get a slab side uh, C4 in this country for, I don't know, 40 to 80 grand. Um, but this car is sitting at $134,911. And they did not bring them to the United States in 93. In 94, the last year, we did bring in a car that was called the wide body. Um, uh, but those cars don't have the anniversary badging uh, like this one does. So I think these cars are still worth a little bit more money. And of course, they're unobtainium because they were never bought to the United States. This car is in Canada and your friends at Silver Arrow will probably help make arrangements to get it across the border for you. But you will have to pay to import this car. So whatever the hammer price is, you owe BAT a couple bucks and then it's going to cost you probably JP another $7,000 to get this car uh, to, to your driveway. Uh, so somebody's going to be paying already close to 150000 for this car as it sits, and yet there's still an hour and 15 minutes to go. Uh, so what do you think? Do you like uh, the purple? Would you live with purple for this anniversary car? I, You know I'm not a big purple or burgundy or even red fan, but yeah. something about this color is strikingly awesome. I love how dark it is. I love that at night you, this would probably be mistaken for a black car. Totally. I'm totally with you that it needs a black interior. This interior, it's gray, but is is that almost like a purpley gray interior? Is that what's going on here? It yeah, does I don't, not look like say. gray to me. That looks like it's got a hue, like a purple hue. I don't know if that's, I mean, because look at those yeah. carpets. Those carpets look purple to me too. I know, um, it's crazy. It, it's hard to tell. It's a, it's an overcast day. They don't have good lighting. These are not good photographs. Um, so, you know, I, I would not trust what you see in the images as for what it's going to look like in real in, in the flesh. Hideous, supple leather again, uh, which is just such a turnoff. But this car is, for on the exterior at least, maybe one of the most beautiful cars uh, ever made. The 964 is has pretty much become the sought-after air-cooled 911 everyone wants that shape and in a wide body with no wing i don't think there's a better looking 911 look at that car so so uh frank collins come on yeah so frank collins when this car came out you're looking at those wheels and that body work uh frank collins said that they called them uh baby 959s like the poor Mm. man's 959 all wheel drive all the technology all the modern stuff on the inside these cars um are really just coveted and i, well, I, I want there one. you go how much better would it be if it were just a two-wheel drive i mean that, that would make oh. it the ultimate 911 i mean but that's you, the, that's the one thing that's holding this car back yeah but you jp you know we could do that right we could yeah take well the, right that is yeah, definitely yeah. a possibility yeah yeah it's, uh, we, it's this car is a couple hours in the shop away from getting that front diff out and now you've got a wide body two-wheel drive car that nobody's ever seen no wing yeah, it's awesome yeah, yeah. it does d- definitely needs to be a little lower too but those are things that are not difficult to yeah. remedy all right what do you what's your bid on this thing where's this thing gonna land is it gonna sell what's going on yeah i think it is uh it's a no reserve auction which is really interesting it mm-hmm. was at one hundred and twenty-eight thousand last night on 21 bids um and so i thought it might bring <laughs> 133 well it's mm-hmm. already at 135 and it's got an hour to go so um it just, I don't know. It, it makes me happy to see that these cars are getting their due um, and that it's really neat. It's on 26 bids, so there's tons of action. Um, I think this car is easily going to break 140 at this point, so I'm going to say $145,000. Ah, uh, man, that's what I was going to say. All yeah. right, so that make that makes it really difficult because it's going to be just a little bit more or just a little bit less. Yeah. 133, boy, uh, with an hour to go, that's a bit of a climb. I'm going to bet the under and go 140, <laughs> 144 then. Uh, I yeah. hate to do it to you, but no, uh, it's, right. uh, it's one way or the other, right? I mean, yeah. I hope it takes off for the sellers, but, uh, it, I mean, that's a long way to go with only an hour left, basically. Basically, yeah. so uh, yeah. If if one of us wins the lottery, we have to promise each other one of us will own that car, so we have access to it. It's got to be in the collection. What a great sure. car! For sure. Yeah. Okay. Uh, staying on, bring a trailer. We're gonna look at this uh, really cool car. I, I've never driven one of these, but the people seem to love them. It's a 2011 BMW 1M. Um, interestingly, um, <laughs> apparently, BMW made several thousand of these things, and in in most typical M cars. The United States gets half of that. But I read some interesting facts in the comments where it said that um, BMW brought like 500 of these in and they made like 6,000 of these cars worldwide. So BMW artificially cut the U.S. market on these cars. And as such, from the moment they were first sold, these cars have always brought a premium. Uh, This car originally stickered JP at $54,000. Now, I'm not saying that BMW dealers sold them for 54, but that's what they cost. 
uh, and they have always brought something in the 60s. Yep. So this car is sitting with four hours to go. It's sitting at $62,000. So here you've got a twin turbocharged three liter inline six with a manual transmission, a limited slip differential, and many of the suspension components have been liberated off of the M3. Uh, so you've got just this really cool car on these huge 19 inch BBS wheels with a manual transmission, very short wheelbase, big power, uh, lots of torque and just one of the most drivable cars. People say this was the purest driving car since the 2002 TII. And uh, and here you go, BMW 1M with a with just 14,000 miles out of Phoenix, Maryland, uh, sitting at $62,000 or I should say eight grand over MSRP. Have you uh, have you driven one? Yeah, and that that price does not surprise me. They ha you're right. They have always been over. I mean, this is this is an M3. This is what the M3 should have been. The M3 of its oh. contemporary became bulbous and big and heavy. And I you know I still love an o, uh, an E90 M3. They're great cars, but they're too big. That should have been the M5. This is what the M3 M3 should have been of right. its era. This is the closest thing to an E30 M3 that BMW has has made made sense um right. my the same friend i was telling you about uh dr j in dallas he yeah. had a 997 turbo uh that was only a couple years old at the time when this car came out he traded in the 997 turbo to get one of these and he wow. has told me since then and he's he's a car he's a car guy he's got a, sounds like it you know, he's got a R8 with all kinds of turbo power and, you know, he has his 993 turbo and a bunch of other fun stuff. He tells me pretty much every chance he gets that the M, that, that this 1M is the most fun car he's ever owned and he kind of regrets selling the one he had. He had one of those cool orange ones. Um, so, yeah, yeah I... I I've never owned one of these. I have driven them and I have to say, hell yeah, this car yeah. being in Maryland looks like it has some corrosion. I mean, we're not seeing pictures underneath here, but there's a little bit of corrosion in the key lock. Uh, mm -hmm. So it looks like somebody's driving yeah. this thing, uh, but you know, whatever. It's, it's not that to, old a it's car. Ha it's hard to imagine that if you had a car like this and it wasn't your daily that you'd ever leave it outside, especially there. Yeah, it's just yeah, crazy yeah. to me. So, um, you know, Matt Whitesell brought Esther and I to Marin County to meet a guy named David uh, who was selling his 914, uh, which he occasionally tracks. He made it a 914.6 out of a 1970. Next, in the stall next to him, he had an M2 competition with a manual gearbox that is his regular track car. And he had only just acquired that car because he had been running a 1M for the last, I don't know, four or five years or something. Mm. And he loved the 1M, but he said the M2 competition with a manual gearbox was the first BMW that was superior in mm. pure driving feel to the 1M. Um, so that, I thought that was pretty high praise. And, of course, he put his money where his mouth is because he traded the cars out. Um, and he was happy that he made the, the, the switch. So uh, I've heard very good things about these smaller platform BMWs, and I agree with you. Their lighter weight, shorter wheelbase makes them real driver's cars, and I'm happy that BMW is building them. And obviously the BMW community loves these cars as this car is sitting – with four hours to go, JP, this car is sitting at eight grand over sticker. And this bid, I think, is already higher than what I had written last night. Uh, actually, I wrote 63000 last night. So I'm going to heap, JP, I'm going to heap another few thousand bucks. I'm going to go 66000 all right, I'm going to give you a fighting chance. I think people want this car. There are very few of them. I'm going to go $70,000. Oh, out of your mind. Oh, my God. You've been... So I'm going to talk to Rochelle after the show and tell her you've been hitting the eggnog too hard. It does only have 14,000 miles. Yeah, it's really nice. Huh? It's, and it's know, white, it, too, which yeah. I think white's a big color for M cars. I, yeah, I like yeah. that. Tough part of the country to go get this car, so you're probably going to have to ship it. Uh, but, yeah. yeah, all right. Somebody's going to have a good time if they get it. Okay, so 70s your bid. All right, we're kind of looking at a car. I you know, I'm not a huge fan of these, but you, you love them. Rochelle loves them. My wife loves them. Uh, I unearthed this 2006 uh, Jeep Wrangler Unlimited uh, that only has 1,600 miles. Can you believe this thing, JP? It looks like it's been uh, cryogenically frozen, like uh, next to uh, Dr. Evil, and they just thawed it out. Um, hermetically you, uh, sealed. Hermetically sealed. <laughs> if you... Um, if you uh, scroll through those photos, JP, and get to the interior, uh, you will show our audience what I think is absolutely the saddest interior of any car I've ever seen. <laughs> it is awful. Uh, but I will say this is an unlimited. Uh, it's got the four liter inline six. It's a uh, four wheel drive with a couple of transfer cases and, um, and an automatic transmission. It's, it's 
it's spectacular in that it's it's just frozen in time. It's really amazing. Uh, to that end, uh, the car is sitting at twenty four thousand dollars with about three hours to go. Um, and it's not like somebody put a home run bid. This car has just organically made it up to twenty four thousand um, on on just eight bids. So there's a couple of people that understand what this thing is and uh, think that it's still a, a great value to have an old one. Uh, without having to pay the premium of 30 plus for a new one. And so this car is bringing ludicrous money. What do you think? Yeah, the uh, so BAT lists this thing as a TJ, and it is not. It is of the Ooh. same era as a TJ, but this is an LJ because of the long wheelbase. This is the first Jeep Wrangler that was called an Unlimited, but unlike the Unlimiteds that you see in mall parking lots everywhere with four doors, this one still only has two, but you can ah. see all the room you have behind the rear folding seat. On a normal TJ, you got about three inches between the back of the seat and the end of the tailgate here. So this car actually has a ton of room inside. When you fold that rear seat up, a short guy like me, if you remove that rear seat, you can almost sleep back there. I mean, you oh, see that cool. they did a little yeah. little picture. Um, these are highly coveted. They, they didn't make a ton of them. Uh, the slightly longer wheelbase makes them a lot more stable on the freeway. Uh, sure. And people love to off-road these and build these. Uh, there, there was a CJ version of of the Jeep uh, called the uh, Scrambler back in the day that was a longer that. version as well. And boy, I mean, this. the other thing about these, and unfortunately this is an automatic, the uh, the last three years of the TJ slash LJ era of the Wrangler before they went to the boxier style, this is the last generation with the inline fours, uh, the high, uh, not inline four, inline six, uh, yeah. four liter engine that is just absolutely bulletproof. Not the most powerful thing in the world, but we'll get 300,000 miles out of it. Um, wow. You know, and the last three years, they also made them with uh, six speeds, They were, which was an option. This one, unfortunately, has an automatic, but I think yeah. that actually... So I think people want automatics more because it's easier to drive, but the six-speed is definitely the coveted one, given that sure. that gives, makes it the enthusiast one. Uh, and for an off-roader, who doesn't want a manual? I mean, it's just silly that you would want uh, an automatic. But this yeah. one being so freaking perfect, wow, oh this guy is... I mean, brand new it's yeah brand look at new. that interior it's just i mean yes it's spartan but uh it's super comfortable you know it has airbags has all those things and stuff like that i mean not exactly a car you want to be in an accident in uh by modern standards but certainly more a uh, heck of a lot safer than a cj5 um yeah yeah i i love this wrangler uh haggerty uh haggerty insurance rated this as a future classic uh not oh, too sure. long ago so yeah. people really started looking for these uh lj's and uh yeah uh i would love to buy one of these but this one's already out of the uh price oh, yeah. range here i mean that's right. yeah well, i hope someone yeah, buys but... this and drives it i mean is this going to be something yeah. you don't ever see them with this low mile so i guess of wranglers this would be an actual collector nobody collects them <laughs> i know it's crazy i would think you'd have to have one of those weird editions with a crazy paint job to put one away but clearly yeah. with this thing only having 1600 miles what's that four tanks of gas i mean yeah. my goodness and it looks spectacular yeah so i i don't know jp it's hard for me to understand where the value is i love that you've pointed out to me and the audience that it's got that long wheelbase but it's a two-door which is rare i clearly didn't notice that just from the images um Yet it's only got eight bids. It's at a high number on on low bid count. So I'm I'm not feeling that there's still a lot of room left in this car. I had put 26, but once you start talking about the rarity, I do think it'll bring maybe a little bit more than that. So I'm going to say twenty seven thousand dollars, and it sells at that price because, my God, what did it cost brand new? Like twenty eight. 30? Yeah, I mean it's right there in that neighborhood. I had a so there's a there's a Instagram page shout out to at. Uh, cars and bids results. Uh, there's a guy doing a, an Instagram page where he kind of gives gives write ups and analysis of cars after they've sold. Unlike us, where we talk about them before they've sold. Um, yeah. You know, and there was a there was a Wrangler. Uh, it was the next generation one. Uh, it was on. It had low miles, and it was 2010. I want to say, and that was all. It was a JK. So, and it was a two door, and it was on cars and bids, and it only brought like 19 grand or something. Um, yeah. And the guy, you know, went on and 
and on. His analysis, and I think the guy is generally pretty good, but Wranglers are one of those weird objects, one of those weird cars that enthusiasts don't seem to get. There's not a lot of crossover of people who like Porsches and Wranglers. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. uh, I'm, yeah, yeah. You know, I'm like that only guy, right? Wrangler yeah. is one of those things. You know, he said that, oh, Wranglers, there's all this competition now because of the Bronco, and at this price, you could get a 4Runner or an FJ or, you know, or whatever. And he's talking about or all these different things things and it's like look a forerunner is not a competitor to a wrangler at all no one's cross shopping those two things i mean it makes sense to someone who's not into them to think that but they are not the same this boxy utilitarian thing about the wrangler is unique Uh, yes there are a gajillion of them but a gajillion people want them because no one else makes anything like it you you know the guy mentioned the g-wagon but a g-wagons g-wagons you're talking about ten twenty thousand dollars more typically uh for the same amount of miles or twice as much even and the top doesn't come off um you know in the Bronco is just an absolutely absurd thing to talk about because you can't get one yet. When the Broncos actually hit the ground, then talk to me about how they're affecting the market of the Wranglers. But as of right now, that, you all you that, can do is put money down on one, but you can't drive one. Yeah, that conversation is still two years away. Yeah, um, I'm but so yeah, sick of hearing that. Yeah, it's interesting, JP, that you're one of those weird guys that likes Porsches and Wranglers. I mean, yeah. do you put mayonnaise on your French fries or ketchup <laughs> on the pizza? <laughs> yeah. Man, they'll shoot you in France for that. <laughs> okay so i say 27 and this thing sells at that price what do you think what's yeah. your bid uh, i i'm i don't know if this is the platform for it that was my point uh, with ah. the with the guy's thing you know i'm going look the reason why i didn't bring that money is because enthusiasts don't know what the hell they're looking at and this car if it were on the if that car if that jeep wrangler that was on cars and bids that sold for 18 or 19 or whatever it was. Maybe it was even less than maybe it was like 15 or something like that. If that same vehicle yeah. was on Craigslist in the local guy's area or offer up or something like that, he would have got $5,000 more. This, the, wow. neither of these platforms are the right place for a Jeep Wrangler. They're just not, mm. you know, a built Cayenne with big tires and a roof rack. Hell yeah. Some weird I've, enthusiast wants that, but a, yeah. but a run of the mill Jeep Wrangler, um, you know, the hillbillies that want to beat the hell out of this thing on, you know, on the dirt roads in their neighborhood, I, I, they're not going to cars and bids or bring a trailer. I feel like you're hatching a business plan for somebody who's listening to the show today. You know, <laughs> Oh, we need a platform just for Jeeps. It's not a bad so idea. Yeah. Uh, yeah, but will it climb much higher than this? I, it, I didn't think so. I, I originally wrote 26, and because you told me that it was kind of a special version that you just don't see, I added a grand to it. So I'm saying 27. Where are you at? I'll take your 26 then. I think it gets a couple grand more. Oh, but man. you know what, Deep? This, this vehicle could really go. This could be in the 30s. I mean, why yeah. not? Uh, I mean, yeah. honestly, this is better than a JK that you can buy. Or not, What's the latest version? It's not even a JK. I think it's called a JL or something like that, the latest version. Right. Um, right. But I would way rather have this Jeep than a JK. This has the venerable inline six-cylinder engine. This yeah. engine is going to go till the, the apocalypse, whereas that minivan <laughs> engine that they put in the new ones, it's just like every other engine. It's going to blow. And now they yeah. come with four-cylinder turbos lugging that big you know, square thing around trying to get it through the air. They're not yeah. exactly an aerodynamic and efficient vehicle. Yeah. So this thing, this thing will get you going after the apocalypse. This yes. is your post-apocalyptic escape vehicle. Correcto. And uh, anybody right. who buys this, give me a holler. I think I have an, a fuel injection uh, module laying around in a box somewhere that will get you an extra <laughs> 10 horsepower. <laughs> <laughs> from from Rochelle's old one. Uh, all wow. right. Well, man, we uh, we really uh, we had this is a lot of show here. I guess it's a holiday yeah. week, and we're just hanging out. We hope that uh, you enjoyed the show with us today. We didn't get a chance to talk to uh, talk about our sponsors, guys. Custom GYX oh, underscore man. customs yeah. on the Instagram. It's I Christmas know. week. Get yours. Get yours now. Yeah, it's Paint not the watch. Sample. It's the bracelet. Yeah, there. So, um, so yeah, go check them out on Instagram. Uh, you know, oh, here we go. I can give them. I can give you the little thing there. So your daily nerd out on the most interesting cars on cars and bids and bring a trailer is right here at the bid nerds michael deep thank you very much for joining me anything you want to say before we close it up no good week john we'll see you tomorrow let's go buy a 944 i'm gonna be watching that oh, one. absolutely that? yeah when does it and let's uh let's say it's got four hours to go so i'll call you at like 
two o'clock. Maybe we'll do. Maybe we'll do a live. Should we do yeah. a live close on that one? Yeah, let's let's watch the audience guys come back in. A, come back in a few hours and and watch the close of the nine forty four. Maybe we'll do that one live. And I don't know. Maybe one of the maybe maybe the bid nerds will be bidding against one another. Uh, yeah, exactly. Kind of fun. <laughs> cool. Thanks, guys. See you tomorrow right, at nine. Sorry.